There have been a lot of technological breakthroughs in recent years that have helped get life-saving organs to patients. The latest combines a newer technology with a very exciting new technique. It really is. Henry Ford Health announced today the first two successful beating heart transplants in the state of Michigan. Dr. Frank McGeorge is here to explain what that is and how it improves heart transplantation, Doc. Well, Kim and Evan, this is cool, but a quick warning first. The story does show a heart out of the body. Now, as the name implies, a beating heart transplant is done on a beating heart. That means stitching five blood vessels while they move about once a second. Now, to get some idea of how cool this is and the technical skill involved, I want you to imagine that you're hand sewing the hem of a tiny pair of pants while someone's wearing them. But once a second, they jerk their leg a little bit. And if you mess up, they could die. I didn't quite understand it right from the beginning. Ken Miller of Ferndale was the first Michigan patient to receive a beating heart transplant. I felt, you know, blessed and privileged <laughs> um, to get the procedure because I feel like uh, I have a better chance of survival. So the heart in the box, as Dr. Nemi was describing, it was a technology that really has taken off um, in the last several years. And, and what this box is, um, is essentially a, a mobile mini heart and lung machine. Dr. Kyle Militek, a Henry Ford Health cardiac transplant surgeon, says this allows organs like the heart to be kept alive while they're transported out of the body. And in the case of the heart, it remains beating. The traditional way of, of transplanting a heart in the box is once that comes to the hospital as it's beating, uh, we would stop the heart a second time and sew it in while the heart is still and cold. The problem is, for the 60 to 90 minutes after you stop the heart and are sewing it in, it's no longer beating and it's undergoing slow damage. But what if you didn't stop it? By attaching the continuously beating heart to the patient's bypass circulation, you can do just that. While the heart is continuously beating and receiving for the first time the recipient's blood, we're actually sewing it in. So it's a little bit more challenging. You're having to hit a moving target um, because the heart is moving the whole time. So how fast was it beating? Uh, about 60 to 80 beats per minute. So you're sewing a heart that's mm -hmm. beating, that's actually beating 60 to 80 beats per minute? Yes. Yeah. So do you sew between beats or what do you, like what's your pattern? Yeah, you really focus on the one area that you're trying to stitch and then you stabilize that, try to get that to move as little as possible and then put the stitch exactly where you need it to go. And for Ken? I look forward to being able to walk a distance now. Wow. Now, incidentally, for the anatomy geeks out there, there are actually five vessels that have to be reattached. The left atrium, the aorta, the pulmonary artery, and then the superior and inferior vena cava. That requires hundreds of individual stitches. My goodness. Incredible. But it is just one, one long thread. Just a lot of little stitches. <laughs> go, 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 of course. Um, th this is unreal. With this technology, though, how far can surgeons travel with you know, to get a heart, I guess. Well, that's kind of the cool thing. You know, between the heart in a box technology and it basically having a beating heart and the ability to install a beating heart still, they have now expanded the range to hours, which basically includes now the entire continental United States. That's crazy, too. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, yeah really what a great story. All right, All right. Doc. Thanks, Doc. Sure.